All right, so where we left off was how to get ready for Monday's class, next class, using your holiday weekend, fueled by yams and turkey, to come up with your idea by writing a direct one sentence statement of what your idea is, and then brainstorming at least three different thumbnails. about how you can express that idea. Then I am going to work with you in the first half of class individually, and we're gonna define what is the strongest thumbnail, what is the strongest approach, and how can it be better? So in this example with Gerson, we identified together that the, the butterfly meme one had the most potential. It talked about most of the things he was interested in, and we wanted to combine it. So we took some of the Karen stuff, and we decided instead of just being a guy in a MAGA hat, we would make it a Karen. And instead of it being um, common sense, that's the book, we were going to make it, he decided to make it a Google search. And then instead of it saying, is this socialism looking at the mask? He just asked, is this oppressing me? Because that's kind of the Karen thing. But then he needed reference for how do you show a Karen? So even though he would use that in the name of it, and I do feel bad for everyone named Karen, but that is the meme. People understand that. He found reference for Karen haircuts <laughs> and just kind of went with it. He also found an actual anti-mask uh, protest sign and was going to use that as the reference of the mask. And then this is the meme he's really trying to, to kind of copy. So this was the refined sketch. Karen with the butterfly meme, with a floating face mask, and underneath it saying, is this oppressing me? And the book is Google. So in the second half of next class, if everything goes well, I check in with you. And we make sure that you know how best to fulfill this intention now. You have your idea. Your idea shouldn't be limited on what you think your skills are, right? Or what you think would be easy. It should just be what's the best way to show your idea. And with the experience I've had using digital tools to create things on deadlines and timelines, I'm going to help you figure out what your workflow is. So that is the next step. Step three, setting up your personal workflow. This is the creation of your work. So depending on your idea, you can decide that you want to composite it. You can decide that you want to illustrate it. You can decide you want to digitally paint it. You can decide you want to animate it. You can decide you want to do a type-based design. Whatever it is, it has to be based on what you feel you can do by the deadline. And the deadline is a week from today, next Wednesday. Follow the course outline. So. With Garrison, we decided he was going to use digital inking to create a raster illustration. So basically like, like our spot illustration assignment. And he did a really thin digital outline, and then he digitally colored it. And then he put in the type. He composited in the Google search type. He composited in this kind of typewriter, a meme type. And he did really simple digital painting in the background. And it all came together pretty well. Then you have to think, once you've finished your artwork, how will the audience see it and how will they understand it? So what size do you want it to print? Make sure you have resolution for that, thinking with the end in mind. That's something I'll do with this second critique with you as well. And if we don't, have, if we don't get around to doing a second critique next class, these are the things you want to think through before you print yours. And we can print next class if you're ready, but more than likely we're going to have to print after next class and before Wednesday's class, or you'll have to get it printed somewhere else. And then how will the audience understand it? You're going to write an artist statement, just a simple artist statement that gives your name, the title of your artwork, which is very important. Remember, without the title Karen versus the Masks of Tyranny, you might not understand why this is the woman he illustrated. And it needs to fit on one page. It should not be more than a page. And it's going to explain what your idea was and how you created it. So this was his example. He gave his name. He gave the title of the piece. 
And he said, I wanted my artwork to poke, poke fun at the ignorance and prevalence of anti-mask and COVID denying sentiment that is running rampant on social media. To do this, I mashed up the butterfly meme elements with a face mask, a camera, you know, all that. So he describes it. He makes sure that the audience knows what his intention was. And then he tells the audience a little bit about the work that went into making it, right? So this is how you're going to finish this proving ground for next class, right? So first, you need to create at least three rough thumbnail solutions. And you're going to post them right here. These are just for your thumbnails. <clears throat> and you want to participate in that individual process critique with me next class. If you're not here, I will do a Zoom session through next class. So, and I'll invite everyone to it. So you're going to find me through that, but just be patient because I'm working with in-class people and remote people. Next. Did you challenge your own perception, uh, preconceptions, right? Did you brainstorm and acknowledge the cliches as part of your process and work beyond them with your thumbnails? So basically, did you make your thumbnails a challenge to be visually interesting? And then did you use the information from my process critique, which we'll do on Monday, to improve your refined sketch before moving on to finishing it off. So this is what you need. Your first step is to define your problem with a sentence. So these are some examples I gave during the pandemic. This was a summary sentence I proposed. So collective pain and even disconnection and isolation can give the opportunity for insight, self-awareness, and healing. Notice this has nothing to do with censorship. This was a different theme. Right? Using your summary sentence, you start acknowledge the cliches and brainstorming, and then you generate at least three thumbnail sketches. Your three thumbnail sketches, in my opinion, are best if they are pretty different ideas, not just variations on one idea. Because that's how you acknowledge the cliches. So for this idea, collective pain and even disconnection and isolation can give the opportunity for insight, self-awareness, and healing. This was my very optimistic way of thinking about the lockdown, right? I'm trying to help students through it. So in my first thumbnail, I thought of the, the metaphor, the visual metaphor to communicate clearly of disconnection, of a plug being unplugged. And that the plug itself, let's see if I can zoom in on this. The plug itself was kind of bent, broken, the cord was was fraying and maybe sparking. And that the the plug itself, the connection would represent healing. So that was one idea. The other was you take a per a person, you make it more individual. And you show the face being disconnected from the body, from the head, with these kind of plugs. And then the other was using the more of a type solution, the years 2020 and 2021, with a dirty Band-Aid over it. So I have my summary sentence showing the problem I'm trying to solve. I have three possible solutions. And then I met with the instructor in my own head, <laughs> and we thought about what was the best way to get the strongest idea out of those original thumbnails, and came up with this refined sketch, which uses lighting and has the face with kind of a neutral expression without individual cords, but just one big plug plugging into this shadowy body. And you get the sense from like the energy surrounding it and the lighting that once it plugs in fully, it will feel more complete. Right? And then once you have that refined sketch, you meet with the instructor again and you try to push the ambitions of it. So what digital art techniques can really finish this off 
Should it be composited? Should it be digitally painted? Should it be a combination of both? Should it be an illustration with, with line art, like a digital coloring? Based on what you like to do, what your talents are, what size should it be? How should it be presented to the class? And then on the next page, that's where you'll post your final project. So here you're going to post all this stuff, your summary sentence, your thumbnails, and then eventually your refined sketch. That will go on this page here. When you are ready and you've done all that, then you're going to post your final project and your artist statement on this page here. And this is where we will do our, our full class critique next Wednesday. All right. Where we also want to have them printed and in the, in the room like we did for the midterm. And then we're also going to pick five pieces from the semester as our final portfolio pieces. And for any of those pieces, you're going to post them to outside of Canvas to Imgur. where you can see some examples of these past final projects, the artist statements and the digital artwork, though they're on a different themes than uh, censorship. Right? But you can see some of the finishing techniques they use. You can see what they wrote about it. Some of them are a little wordy, but they fit to a page. So all of that is there to help. So just to remind you, the concept project workflow, you first have to define your problem. Our overall theme that you're trying to create an idea within is anti-censorship posters, posters against censorship. You're going to brainstorm what are some of the ways you can address your idea. You're going to collect info to strengthen it and make a more refined sketch. You're going to have my help kind of working through this iterative process to get a better idea before you go to your workflow and your creation. And then as part of that, you want to think about how you present it to the class through printing, through matting, through using the screen, if it's animation or video, and that will give you your final product. All right, that is the project. So I'll be working with you individually on it. All of you all have different ideas. You have different skills you want to use. That's the exciting part of it.